This is the Celestron Nexstar 8SE, and it's one of the best selling telescopes of all time. Why? I have a few ideas, but I intend to find out for myself. Now, this is a visual telescope designed for looking at the moon and planets and maybe a few bright deep sky objects. But what about astrophotography? I know it's not actually designed for it, but is it a complete waste of time? Well, we'll find out because I'm gonna share with you my experience using Celestron's smartphone adapter, the Next YZ. So please join me for another night here in the backyard as I try to find out what all the fuss is about with the Celestron Nexstar 8S. all-in-one telescope package you've been looking for? At this point, I'm going to confidently say not quite, but that's okay. However, I did ask the Astro Backyard Facebook community how they felt about the Nexstar 8SE, and almost all of them had amazing things to say about this telescope. There are a few quirks, of course. The finder scope sucks. I left the red dot finder battery on again. Battery's toast. The single arm fork mount design is a little wobbly for astrophotography, but overall everyone seemed to agree that it was a great purchase and they got lots of use out of it. As an astrophotographer, the first thing I see is that single arm fork mount in the Altaz design, and that is not what you want if your primary goal is long exposure deep sky astrophotography. But people have taken some really impressive astro photos using this telescope. It just requires a different approach. If you're into solar system photography, planetary, Saturn, Jupiter, the moon, all of that, the scope is a killer. It'll be just fine if you're into that stuff. So I've got the Celestron NexYZ smartphone adapter attached to the Nexstar 8SE. And I've used a few of these smartphone adapters and basically their job is to securely hold your phone and line up that camera with the center of the eyepiece on the scope. And getting that centered is really key and getting it flush. And this adapter luckily makes that really easy because it's got three axes. So you can go from side to side, up and down, up and down we'll do first, side to side. And what you're seeing is my camera lens actually hitting the center of that eyepiece. So the camera settings I'm using for this, you'll wanna put your camera in manual mode. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S21 and this has a three times telephoto camera lens. This is the one I'll use to just get in nice and tight in that eyepiece. And then in manual mode, I can set the ISO, set the exposure time to about five seconds, two seconds, whatever I want. And most importantly, set a timer. So say a five second timer, I'll line up a planet in here and then adjust the settings to taste and then set that timer and take a photo. I'll see how it turns out. But I already like the control that I have with this smartphone adapter being able to so easily line it up and hold the phone securely. One last thing I forgot, the focusing will be done via the telescope, not on the camera, of course. So the focuser knob on the telescope, that's how you'll get your star or planet or whatever in focus. And then you'll see the feedback, real-time feedback on your phone screen. If you look at the spec sheet for this telescope, it does highlight some serious potential in an all-in-one package like this. And I can start to see why it's such a popular choice for beginners into astronomy and eventually astrophotography. I've always said an eight inch daub is the best beginner telescope, but I can see why some people might want something like this. I'm not gonna lie. It's that time of year again. Oh God. Now this telescope is completely new to me. I've never used one, but right out of the gate, I did notice a few things. The tripod that's included with this package is one that I would call medium duty. It's an aluminum tripod. It's very similar to the one that comes with the Star Adventure GTI, a star tracker. So it's that caliber of tripod. It seems stable enough for a mount and telescope of this size, and it keeps the weight down for travel. The fork arm mount head connects to the tripod base 
piece using three threaded bolts and it feels pretty secure and stable. The telescope mount head has a plastic outer casing reminding you that this is a budget affordable go-to telescope package. The Celestron Nexstar remote sits neatly into the fork arm mount, a pretty cool space-saving design. Users of the Nexstar 8SC mentioned that a dual fork arm design would help the OTA feel a lot more secure and stable. Honestly, the, the motorized head on this mount is where the cost savings come into play. It feels a little toyish, but the OTA reminds us that this is indeed a serious telescope. This is an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope with a focal length of 2 2032 millimeters at f10. This orange tube SCT has been in production since 1970. The C8 is absolutely legendary in the telescope world. It packs plenty of light gathering power into a practical compact design. Now as I said it is running at f10 which is a little on the slow side which means that dim deep sky objects are going to be really hard to find and see especially if you're in the city under a light polluted sky. One of the biggest draws to this telescope for beginners, aside from that compact design, is its go-to functionality. You can choose an object you would like to see on the hand controller and the telescope will go right to it. Of course, to do this, the telescope needs to know where it is on Earth to point accurately. Luckily, on the Nexstar 8SC, this is a dead simple process called a sky align. You don't need to know the location or the name of a single star in the night sky for it to work. You simply choose your location from the database. I chose Toronto, close enough. And point the telescope at three bright stars any three bright stars. To help you point the telescope directly at them, you can use the included red dot finder. Keep both eyes open and move the telescope until that red dot is directly on the star. Then when you look in the eyepiece, it should be right there or close to it. Just center the star and confirm its position. Do it on three bright stars. Once that's done, your telescope knows exactly where it's pointed. I tested this for the first time tonight and I chose the Ring Nebula as my first target after that alignment. This is a rather bright deep sky object in the constellation Lyra. Sure enough, with this simple routine, the telescope slewed right to it, first try. Now that is a positive first experience. Bravo Celestron, I actually had that, oh my God, I see it feeling. To really enjoy using this telescope, do yourself a favor and pick up a nice eyepiece, something wide. The Nexstar 8SE package came with an inch and a quarter, 25 millimeter plossel, which is a decent start. A wider, lower magnification eyepiece will make the star alignment process a little easier and make for a slightly brighter view. If it's planets that you're after, get a decent high magnification eyepiece too, something in the 10 millimeter range or lower. I have a soft spot for equipment that makes the astronomy experience welcoming and approachable. The Nexstar 8SE can deliver you your first view of Saturn or the Andromeda Galaxy, and that's a beautiful thing. The mount design of the 8SE isn't perfect, and it sacrifices stability for a compact portable design. In a nutshell, the telescope and optics are fantastic, the mount is not. Slewing the telescope at slower speeds is a little laggy, and touching the telescope or eyepiece while viewing an object results in a wobbly image. So keep those hands off while observing. The NexYZ smartphone adapter is a great little design, probably the best one on the market. But capturing anything other than the moon or planets will be really challenging. Others have done it, but unless you're willing to put in some serious time, stick to solar system objects when using your smartphone for astrophotography with this scope. You can fasten a DSLR camera or planetary camera to this telescope, but be warned, this will lead you down the astrophotography rabbit hole, and there is no way out. Trust me on this one. The Nexstar Skyline system is dead easy to perform, and you can skip over the whole polar alignment process. The telescope can find and follow an object in the night sky for you. Saturn stayed in the center of my eyepiece for almost 20 minutes, a 2,000 millimeter focal length. Try doing that with your manual daub. The 8-inch OTA has enough aperture to deliver some amazing views of the moon, planets, and the brighter nebulae and galaxies. If the price of the 8SE is too steep for you, you have options. This telescope comes in 
four, five, and six inch variations. Overall, the Celestron Nexstar 8 SE is a remarkable product. I highly recommend it to anyone looking for a practical, travel-friendly visual scope that allows you to get your feet wet in astrophotography. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to pack for the Cherry Springs Star Party, and I've got a spot saved in my trunk for the 8SE. Until next time, clear skies.